In my video on the porcupine, I made some pretty bold and honestly unwarranted claims. Previously, on Waffles Plays Games, probably, I guess. Some very unsatisfying thump noises. I don't know, it feels clunky. It doesn't seem to hit hard at all consistently. Nothing too fancy. I don't really think the porcupine is right for me. Well, I heard your comments. Not that I can actually hear comments, per se. That would be weird. But if there's one thing I've gleaned from your comments and from the fact that my porcupine video is my most watched video and from playing with it some more in my black metal slash planes tier video, it's that the porcupine deserves a second look. And while we will do some seeker hunting, we'll also take it out and slay some additional enemies in the plains biome, which is kind of what this weapon is intended for. Anyway, let's give the spiky boy a second look in <clears throat> Porcupine 2, The Reckoning. I think we ought to start by taking a close-up look at the porcupine and dive deep beneath the quills, if you will. On the Valheim wiki, this thing has a pretty f***ing awesome description. A deadly weapon bristling with fiendish spikes. Its combination of blunt and pierce damage make it an all-around effective weapon against many enemies. From the notes on the wiki, it's the only black metal tier weapon that doesn't require black metal to craft, so it can be acquired without needing to transfer or process black metal scrap. Kinda nice. It only takes a total of 32 iron to get this weapon to its max level. 32 iron to max it out is practically nothing compared to the 80 black metal it takes to max out the black metal sword, the 120 black metal for the black metal at gear, or even the 120 silver required to max out the frostner. And yet, despite the porcupine's low comparative resource requirements, it still hits hard, and it's a very effective weapon against enemies in the plains especially. While locks are resistant to blunt, frost, and slash damage, they're not resistant to piercing damage. So if you're locks hunting, maybe take a spear, but the porcupine won't be a slouch with its 63 pierce damage at max level. Fuelings, on the other hand, in any of their forms, aren't resistant to anything, so the pokeboy will do just fine there. Despite all the things going for it, I just didn't really like the porcupine much when I tried to use it. But let's put all this theory to the test and slay some stuff to see if the pokeboy can truly win me over. Maybe spending a bit more time with it will give me a better idea of why this weapon doesn't really resonate with me so well. Time for some practical application. And by practical application, I mean murder of bugs. First, of course, we're going to start by slaying some more Seekers. Now, this is something that I've done before. You've probably seen those videos. If you haven't, they will be linked in the description if I remember properly. But obviously, Seekers are resistant to all types of damage aside from magic. So it's just, it's not going to be the most effective weapon. But no weapon is going to be the most effective weapon. So pretty much what that means is the Porcupine should do just fine against Seekers. And my experience is pretty okay. I don't love it, but I don't dislike it. It's just never my go-to. And I think the best way to really articulate why I don't like the porcupine in the Mistlands is for some strange reason, I have trouble hitting ticks. I don't understand. Maybe it's the hitbox, the way that it swings. I'm not sure exactly. But for some reason, I really struggle with ticks in the Mistlands with the porcupine. And you'll pretty much see a good example of that here. I take a potion right here and I start to really get enveloped in absolute chaos. It amazes me how quickly this simple seeker soldier fight turned into a battle for survival against three seekers, a gyal, sky jellyfish, and multiple ticks all attacking me from multiple angles. Yeah, it's just, it was just pure chaos. And so I broke out the shield and yeah, took a bunch of potions, 22 health, straight up not having a good time once again. Tried to get my stamina back, I popped a bone mass, and yeah, I just, I tried to fend off all of these ticks, all of these seekers, with something that I just didn't feel was up to the task. But that's me. As we know, the porcupine should be completely 100% up to task. And I think realistically speaking, the only issue I'm having is me. It's just me not being too familiar with it, but that's the whole point of me making this video and all the other videos of me testing weapons in the Mistlands and beyond. It's just me trying to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, familiar with the unfamiliar. 
With this battle, it's I'm just really struggling, but yeah, I, I turned around to face the enemies and they just they kind of just destroy me. Even though I have a bone mass popped, I've got no stamina, I've got no health, I've got a lot of enemies all around me, and yeah, the porcupine does a good job at kind of like sweeping and hitting multiple enemies, but I'm struggling with the ticks and I'm struggling with all these seekers. It's a rough battle for sure. I'm gonna skip around just a little bit, but I'll keep in the highlights. I managed to take out one of these seekers that was low health, and the tick decides that it wants to hug my neck, while another one decides to imitate being a hat. It was kind of annoying. It took a lot of effort and a lot of time, but eventually I was able to kill all of the ticks and the seekers, and it was just me, a lone seeker soldier, and a very persistent sky jellyfish that was continuously dispatching more ticks. I really needed to regain some stamina, so I kind of just walked around for a little bit, and at one point I did kind of walk outside of the battle just so that I could just gain my composure, gain some health and stamina back. But I wasn't gone for long. I came back and I wanted to, you know, finally finish the battle with this soldier. And of course, ticks are always a problem. <laughs> it just never ends with them. But at least this guy jelly was kind of leaving me alone. Now in this video, we're not gonna spend a huge amount of time slaying seekers. That's just, that's what all the other videos are about. I think this time we're going to just do this one seeker encounter because I think it demonstrates all that we need to know about seekers and how the porcupine handles them. It is an effective weapon against them, but seekers are resistant to blunt and piercing damage, of course. So after dealing with the ground enemies, I, I just ran away from the sky jellyfish. It wasn't part of this. I'm not here to test ranged weapons like the arbalest. So let's move on to the planes. It had been quite some time since I fought any fuelings or attacked a fueling village whatsoever, so this was actually pretty fun to do again. And I tried to kind of just slowly walk up to it so I could attract just a couple fuelings. But of course, as things tend to go with me and my videos when I'm recording, chaos ensues, and this totally wasn't intentional. But yeah, I'm on fire. I'm running for my life, kind of. Uh, it's, once again, just not, not going well. But if there is one thing I am noticing, it's how hard the porcupine is hitting these guys. It's impressive. It actually seems to be killing them when I do get a swipe in uh, pretty easily without too much effort at maybe two swipes. It's not bad at all. It's actually kind of refreshing fighting enemies that aren't resistant to all types of damage. Oh, and my club's level is about 29 at this point. Uh, nothing too fancy, but definitely no slouch. I really don't like how fuelings just love to hit you once and then kind of run around. They're, a, they're just a really squirrely enemy. They just love to be very difficult to hit. And I'm realizing that my shield has a little bit of knockback, but yeah, also right here, um, I noticed that I had accidentally kited all these enemies into a tar pit. While that definitely wasn't on purpose, and I kind of was a little disappointed, it was it was okay, because I needed to, I wanted to focus and just, you know, this, this wasn't about me fighting all the enemies at once, this was about me testing this weapon, and I wasn't able to do that with so many enemies fighting me all at once. So, you know, this kind of thinned them out a little bit, and I was able to uh, kind of just take care of them at the very end. And I was going to shoot this guy, but he ended up taking out the enemies over here, so I was actually free to murder him myself with the porcupine. And really, it, it wasn't that big of a deal at all. Once you have just one enemy, it's just like a seeker soldier. It's pretty much nothing. It's not a big deal at all. This guy, these guys just, they died pretty quickly, pretty easily. And uh, I returned to the village so that I could finish the job and it was a lot more fun because it wasn't absolute chaos. Well, it was definitely chaos. It just wasn't complete chaos. Fuelings always seem to see me all at once, and so yeah, they attack me, they try to light me on fire, but no, I'm actually doing okay, and yeah, I'm able to use the porcupine at least mostly efficiently, and I start realizing that this weapon is definitely an effective weapon, but it's, it's knocking enemies back, and I start to kind of become conscious that this may be the reason why I don't really prefer this weapon over other weapons like swords. Because of that knockback, I am unable to get a normal three-hit finishing combo on these enemies. And, you know, it's you saw that right there. It just knocks them back. I can't get the second swing in there. At least in that scenario, I was able to get the third hit, but I did miss the second hit. And I think that is 
an issue for me at least. But let's go ahead and just take care of the shaman real quick and then we'll make sure the village is clear and then we'll move on to the next one. Oh yeah, definitely not clear. We still got this little tower right here. So let's go ahead and just take that out. And uh, these, these ladders, let's just talk about them real quick. These ladders are dumb. Why do you have to hop up top of them? That doesn't make any sense. There needs to be better ladder mechanics in this game. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, let's just go ahead and hop up to the top of this one. And we got one more fueling, but hey, look, he's a one star. But of course, that's no problem. One backswing and he's off of the tower, at least. So I didn't bring my feather caper. I would have jumped off from the top. But let's just go ahead and uh, finish this village off. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one, shall we? I tried once again to only aggro just a couple of these fuelings, and this time it was successful. I guess they were along the edge a little bit more, so this wasn't too big of a deal, this berserker right here. I just, you know, of course that was just a miss. I'm usually a little better at my parries, but there's only two enemies right now, and they're not a big deal. I can pretty easily just kill them with a couple swipes. I do like how the berserkers don't get knocked back, so I can actually get my three-hit combos in there. I don't get a whole lot of time to rest, but I guess I don't need a whole lot of time to rest after that easy battle. These other fuelings decide to try to, you know, end my life prematurely, but they were just no problem. Even just two hits takes them out, and that's pretty impressive. Somehow I was able to kind of sneak up on this one, but I just, I missed the backswing, and yeah, it's just, it seems like a consistent theme that two, maybe three hits is killing all of these fuelings, and yeah, I'm wearing carapace armor because I don't want to die, but this isn't a test of resilience against fueling attacks. This is a video about me testing the porcupine against fuelings, and my skill level's about 30, 29, 30, something like that. Uh, yeah, and as you saw, um, so I did try to attack just a few enemies, and now we've got a whole bunch attacking me. Uh, once again, we revert to the whole idea of chaos. Just the common theme of most of my videos, I would say. I'm taking a lot of hits, and everything is just, you know, scattered around me. There's so many enemies, and they're always surrounding me. And right about here, I I get down to practically no health. 28 right there. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. It's not great, so I run away for a little bit. I don't go too far, but I decide it's bone massing time. The fact of the matter is, enemies in this game aren't necessarily hard. They're not difficult when you have them alone or even maybe groups of two. But when you have things like this going on, when you have multiple berserkers running at you and, you know, you can slowly whittle them down, but everybody's trying to kill you all at once. And fuelings, they just love attacking you from multiple angles. I feel like maybe the devs have coded them so that they actually intentionally surround you. I think that's actually a thing, but I'm just guessing here. I'm gonna skip around just a little bit because, you know, how it goes. I walk around for a little bit, just kiting the enemies around, trying to get my health and stamina back and it goes okay. It's just, it takes a long process, and if I were to do completely uncut, that would be an unnecessarily long video. And uh, yeah, that's the first time I guess I've picked up a Berserker trophy. That's pretty cool, so I actually added that to my collection. Then with a nice backswing, I stagger this Berserker, and a couple swipes, it's dead. The other Berserker is now staggered because of a good parry, and it's three good swipes, you're dead. Now I can just focus on just regular fuelings, which, you know, they're no slouch, they're still squirrely, they're still running around all over the place trying to get behind me, and yeah, I just definitely go for too many of these secondary attacks. These guys don't always seem to lend themselves well to the secondary attack unless they're staggered, which does happen kind of often like this, but no stamina, so I can't use it. Then with a good parry, it's it's all over for this guy. But yeah, you saw the knockback, <laughs> really couldn't do an immediate second swipe, but it was still death for the guy. Another good example here of the knockback of this weapon and, you know, missing the whole second swipe. <laughs> Just two times in a row right there. Not a fan of that. I'd probably say the most annoying fuelings are the ones carrying fire, but that one is now significantly less annoying. I moved into the village and quickly took care of the guy in the tower. Then it was a simple matter of dispatching the rest in the village. I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit so that we can get through this because this video is already long enough and these battles were just repeats of what you've already seen. After putting up a pretty good fight, the remaining fuelings in this village were no more. I realized that I had forgotten to fight a Lox, so I just spawned one into the arena, so let's go ahead and uh, get the fight on. While they're immune to the blunt damage, they're not immune to the piercing damage from the porcupine, so I noticed that it wasn't taking too much effort to bring this guy down to low health, and it was parrying, even without a shield, perfectly fine uh, when I got the timing right. And uh, yeah, a little teaser of what video I'm kind of working on right now. All the shields displayed nicely. I don't know when, but that video will come out eventually. And yeah! 
this jerk decides to slam everything and look at that. Everything's ruined. What a jerk. So after taking a good thorough second look at the porcupine, what do I think? Well, there's no doubting it's a great weapon, especially for the plains biome. But I think I've at least kind of figured out why the porcupine has sort of put me off in the past. The porcupine has a knockback of 90, while the black metal sword has a knockback of 40, less than half. I was having so much trouble getting three hit combos in because the porcupine and seemingly all maces and clubs have high knockbacks. I was used to enemies staying put and letting me finish my deadly three hit combos, but the porcupine wasn't letting me do that. It was killing fuelings perfectly fine because of my clubs level being around 30, but the knockback made it difficult to get in a full three hit combo. Knockback can be a very helpful thing, especially in tight situations where you have a swarm of enemies all around you, but it does limit your ability to deal damage if you're constantly just pushing things away. It can be crowd control, but it's not great for just handling enemies. At least that's my experience. Your mileage, of course, may differ and let me know if I'm completely wrong. So that's pretty much it. The porcupine is cool, but I think for me, it's going to have to stay primarily a display piece back home. Thank you all so much for watching and for all the love lately. I'm having a lot of fun making these videos and it seems like you're enjoying them just as much. So thank you for all the fantastic feedback. It really, it really means so much to me. So I appreciate it. If you want, you can do the whole liking, commenting, and subscribing thing if that's something that strikes your fancy. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.